Good morning, Neighborhood Church and everyone else. I'm so glad you could be here today for another story from God's Word, the Bible, which we know is absolutely true and completely trustworthy. And it teaches us how to live lives that please, capital G, God, the one true God who made the heavens and earth and us. And we want to please him because we love him. We, last week, met King Solomon He was the son of King David, and he had asked God for wisdom, to be a wise ruler. And God said, yes, you may be wise, but I am also going to give you great wealth and honor, and all the world is going to know about you. And today, in 1 Kings 9 through 10, you can turn there now, we're going to see how the news of Solomon's wealth and wisdom spread throughout all the known world, even without the internet. News about what he was like spread to all of the known world at this time, and because of that, people came and visited him. Now, he had finished building the temple. We talked about that last week, and he had filled it with all things beautiful, lots of gold, and God himself had come and inhabited that very holy space. This took seven years to build, and when he had finished that, he also built a beautiful palace, uh, homes for himself, for running the country, and that took another 13 years. Kids, some of you are not even 13 years old yet, and Solomon is building this temple. 20 years of building projects. And when he was done with those building projects, God appeared to him again, just like he had done in Gibeon. And he said, Solomon, if you will walk in my ways, that means if you will follow what I say, and you will worship me as the one true God, then you will always have a descendant on the throne. But if you choose not to follow me, then I'm going to leave and disaster will fall on Israel. Well, you know, we also have a choice to make about who we will follow. We talk a lot about the little g-gods that take up our time and attention. But God says, you know what? I will forgive you for all of your sin. If you believe me, if you accept what I say is true, that sin, those wrong things that we think, do, and say, you can be forgiven. Because my son Jesus died on the cross in your place. And if you believe and accept that, you will be forgiven and you will have the promise of heaven someday, all eternity with me where there is no sin. And then while you're still here on earth, I want you to live like a devoted fan of God. I want you to love me with all of your heart and soul and mind and strength and to read your Bible every day and pray and get to know me. What do you think Solomon chose? Well, when all the building was completed, Solomon sent a thank you gift. This is a really interesting gift. He sent... King Hiram, remember King Hiram had given him all of that beautiful wood. Solomon gave him 20 cities in the, uh, the province of Galilee. But Hiram went to visit them, and he didn't think that they were worth a gift. And so he didn't accept them. But amazingly, King Hiram and King Solomon still remained friends and worked together because they also built ships together, which we'll hear about in just a moment. Uh, in this time... Solomon took a wife. She was the daughter of Pharaoh of Egypt, and he now brought her to live in this beautiful palace he had spent 13 years building. Solomon had the Israelite men become his soldiers and his supervisors for all of the projects that were going on. And then there were some other people still living in the land, and I'm going to call them the Ites. We add Ite to describe the people, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, the Ites. They were there from way back when Joshua first led the people into Canaan, and the Israelites at that time had not gotten rid of all of those people as they were supposed to, and so there were some descendants of them there, and Solomon made them the slaves who had to do all the labor on his building projects. Well, three times a year, Solomon 
would go into the temple and he would offer sacrifices as God had told him to do. And one of the sacrifices would be to ask forgiveness of his sin and others were to worship God and to thank him for all that he had provided. I said that he built ships. He had fleets of ships. A fleet means you own a lot of ships and they sail together. And the, he put his fleets down here in the Red Sea and up here in the Mediterranean Sea. And those fleets were able to go to all the known world. And they would go out for three years at a time and they would bring back lots and lots of gold. In fact, one trip they brought back 420 talents of gold. That may not mean a thing. That is about 32,000 pounds of gold. Kids, maybe two apples make a pound if they're big. Could you imagine 64,000 apples in a pile? That's how much gold he brought back. And he brought back exotic animals and things from other lands. One of the people that heard about him was the queen of Sheba. And the queen of Sheba came from a country, if this map continued all the way down this Arabian Peninsula, there's a country now called Yemen. And that was where she was from. She traveled all the way up here. She had to see for herself, is this all true? And Solomon showed her everything. And her response, the words right from the Bible, were that she was overwhelmed. It was more than she could even imagine from the reports that she had heard. And she brought Solomon wonderful gifts of gold and spices and fine jewels from her country because that's what you did when you visited another country. And Solomon gave her whatever she wanted from Israel to take home. Well, Solomon was also very wise in business. He took this land, this whole red area, and divided it into 12 provinces or counties, and once a year for one month, each province had to provide all of the food for his household and his workers and his thousands of horses. And they did that. And on top of having all of that provided for him, he was still bringing in money because he was a great trader. His ships would go out into all the world and trade for things. In fact, Solomon accumulated so much gold that all of his tableware, his plates and his bowls and his goblets were all made of gold. And he still had so much gold that he made shields for his soldiers out of gold to take those into battle. It says that he made silver as common as a stone in Jerusalem. Jerusalem has a lot of stones. When I was in Israel, they told us to please take some rocks home. They had so many. He didn't use any silver. He only used gold. And he built himself an incredibly beautiful throne out of gold and ivory. You had to walk six steps up to even be able to sit in it. And there was nothing like it in the entire world. He also accumulated horses. And this might be a little bit of a picture of how Solomon's heart was turning. You see, he collected horses and chariots from Egypt. The Bible says he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. Can you imagine? But you see, God had told the people under Moses, I want you to depend on me for your safety. I don't want you to depend on how many horses and chariots you have for battle. Well, you can see from this little picture in these two chapters how God truly blessed Solomon with great wealth, with the honor of people from other nations coming to visit. And we only got to see the one Queen of Sheba, but you can imagine that many others came also to visit. God truly fulfilled those promises that he made way back in chapter 3 because God is a promise keeper. And that means we can trust that God is a promise keeper. And when we think about heaven to come and we've asked for forgiveness of our sin, we can trust he will bring that too.